Cache memory. Cache memory is the computer's speed booster. Imagine you're taking an exam. You don't flip through your entire textbook for every answer. Instead, you jot down key formulas on a cheat sheet. That's cache memory for the CPU. Small, close, and lightning fast. Cache comes in levels, L1, L2, and L3. L1 is the cheat sheet right in front of you. L2 is like a notebook in your backpack, still quick, but takes longer to grab. L3 is like notes stored in your locker down the hall, bigger, but slower. For example, when you open your browser and type a website, the CPU probably uses cached instructions to speed things up. Without cache, even a fast computer would feel sluggish. Registers. Registers are the absolute fastest. They're like sticky notes taped to your hand while cooking. You don't even reach for a cheat sheet. Registers sit inside the CPU, storing numbers and instructions that are being used right this second. They're tiny, sometimes only a few bytes, but without them, the CPU would stop every two seconds to grab tools. For example, every time your computer does quick math, like adding numbers in a spreadsheet, it's happening inside registers before anywhere else. RAM. This is known as random access memory. RAM is your work desk. When you're working on a project, you spread out your books, notes, and laptop on the desk. The bigger the desk, the more things you can handle at once without making a mess. That's what RAM does for your computer. It keeps programs and data close while you use them. But here's the kicker. RAM is volatile. It's like a whiteboard. The moment someone erases it, or in this case, the power goes off, it's gone. That's why saving your work is essential. For example, ever tried playing a modern video game on a computer with only 4 gigabytes of RAM? It's like trying to do a puzzle on a dinner plate. Pieces keep falling off. But with 16 gigabytes, it's like having a giant dining table. Everything fits comfortably. ROM this is known as read-only memory. ROM is the rule book glued to your desk. You don't rewrite it every day, but it's always there when you need it. ROM holds the startup instructions, the BIOS or firmware, that wake your computer up and hand control to the operating system. For example, when you press the power button and see your computer's logo before Windows or Mac OS loads, that's ROM in action. Without it, the computer wouldn't even know how to turn on properly. Virtual memory. Virtual memory is the emergency hack. Imagine your desk is overflowing, so you start stacking papers on the floor. Sure, you can keep working, but now you're bending down constantly. It slows you down. That's virtual memory. When RAM runs out, the computer borrows space from the hard drive or SSD. It keeps things from crashing, but at a cost. Speed. For example, if you've ever had 30 browser tabs open and suddenly your laptop sounds like a jet engine, yep, you're dipping into virtual memory. Flash memory. Flash memory is your backpack. You can pack files, carry them anywhere, and they don't disappear even if the power goes out. USB drives, SD cards, and SSDs all use flash. It's fast, silent, and has no moving parts. But just like a zipper that wears out after years of pulling, flash memory has a limit on how many times it can be written to. Thankfully, modern technology makes that limit so high that most people never hit it. For example, that USB stick you use to submit your school project or carry work files. That's flash memory in action. Portable and dependable. Hard disk drives. Hard drives are the old school giants. Picture a massive library with rows of books. You can store a lifetime's worth of files, movies, music, photos, at a low cost. But finding one book in a huge library takes time. HDDs use spinning disks and moving arms to find your data, and that makes them slower. For example, if your laptop takes several minutes to boot up or load a game, chances are it's running on an HDD. Reliable? Yes. Fast? Not so much. Solid state drives. SSDs are the digital revolution. Imagine replacing that massive library with a search bar. Instead of walking to find a book, you type it in and it appears instantly. That's an SSD. 
They're silent, durable, and blazingly fast. That's why your phone or modern laptop starts up in seconds. For example, a video editor using an HDD spends forever waiting for files to load. On an SSD, those same files pop up instantly. Gamers also love SSDs because loading screens almost vanish. Cloud memory. Cloud memory isn't even inside your computer. It's like renting a locker in a high-security warehouse across town. You don't carry the locker, but you can open it anytime with a key, your internet connection. Google Drive, Dropbox, iCloud. These are all cloud memory. The perks? Access from anywhere, unlimited space, and built-in backups. The catch? No internet, no access. For example, ever pulled out your phone to show a picture stored on Google Photos? That's cloud memory. It's not in your pocket. It's in a server farm somewhere. But it feels like it's right there. So let's wrap this up with the memory cast of characters. Registers. Sticky notes on your hand. Cache. The cheat sheet right on your desk. RAM. Your work desk. Bigger is always better. ROM. The glued down instruction manual. Virtual memory. Papers spilled on the floor when your desk is full. Flash memory. Your backpack, portable and reliable. HDD, a giant library, cheap but slow. SSD, a digital library, instant and powerful. Cloud memory, a rented locker you can open from anywhere. Every time you boot up, play a game, stream a video, or save a file, these memory types work together behind the scenes. They're the unsung heroes that make technology run. If this made computer memory finally click for you, give this video a like, share it with a friend who's into tech, and subscribe. Because learning complex tech doesn't have to be boring. It can actually be fun. Thank you for watching.